epilogue. Finally, we're at the end. This was actually a shorter recording session than I thought. It's only literally just been about a little over two ma- two hours. I sometimes recall the fight, the crying spirit and the sparks flying off the clashing swords. My attacks were immature, and it's not something one could call a sword dance. We were both clumsy and did not know of retreat. The ridiculous sounds of clashing swords were annoying, and I have no memory of them. I'd like to imagine that this is uh, that this is a metaphor. He's actually talking about sex with Ren, and he's just trying to paint it as though he was in a battle. Ugh. At that time, I lost an answer and found an answer. So a plus and a minus makes a zero. Nothing has changed. He's him and I'm me. I'm just watching this fading dream. It's been only a month, but it feels so dear now. It seems like it happened so long ago. The memory of it is fading day by day, and I can't even remember what the person I was fighting looked like. But that is to be expected. That was something that was impossible from the start. We did not believe that the fight would change anything. We just tried to beat each other to ascertain ourselves. So there is nothing to gain from victory. There never was any such thing. A loser comes to an end, and there is no prize for the winner. Man, it really was good for nothing. You said it, not me. But I can still recall it if I close my eyes. The echoes of unrefined metals. A dazzling distant technique that knew, that knew no repeat. Retreat. It was our beliefs that cla- crashed against each other. I guess clash would work too. I fought against my own ideal to carry out my hope. The result is not clear yet. I don't know who won or which of us remained. It should be a while before the result becomes clear. An illusion like a mirage that disappears when one turns around. Only the reverberation remains and my feet will eventually reach. Wake up, you fool. Everyone else has already left for the assembly. Are you going to boycott it even though you are at school? My body is being shaken. The voice brings me back to reality. Oh, it's Issei. Hi. Wait, why are you here, Issei? I raise my head and look at my classmate. Why? We're in our classroom. Today is our last day. And it's ten minutes before the closing ceremony. I came to look for you since I did not see you, but I did not expect to find you sleeping. I don't know if he's in a hurry or just plain angry, but Issei yells at me. We're the only ones in the classroom. It's 9.50. The closing ceremony starts at 10 o'clock, so I bet everyone's at the gym already. You guys have a closing ceremony? I wish I had a closing ce- I guess technically graduation is a closing ceremony. Of sorts. Is it basically the same thing? I don't know how uh, Japanese schools handle it. Hey, are you really awake, Emiya? Yeah, that woke me up completely. Thanks, Issei. I'm glad you came to wake me up. It is fine if you understand, but thank me later. We won't make it unless we hurry. I do not want to think how angry Fujimura-sensei would get if she finds out we were not there. Oh, gotcha. I can't face my classmates if Fujini gives us ridiculous amounts of homework before the vacation. I'll make sure to calm her down. Please. We will be ashamed to face our classmates if she gives us more harm- homework. I am sure they will curse us. He sounds scary, but the frightening truth is that it's very possible. The extra homework she gave us last summer after we got her mad was ridiculous. It wasn't even English homework. What was she thinking when she told us to enter any competition to win a medal? Emiya, we have to hurry. Sorry, I'm coming. We should hurry to the gym for now. It only takes three minutes if we run. We should make it five minutes early if no teacher finds us. No, we cannot run in the hallway. I was too optimistic. As expected from the student council president, he is really committed. As if he is still following the rules even now. Or... Actually, what was that? Uh... As he is still following the rules even now. That's splendid, Issei, but we won't make it if we walk. 
Let us hurry without running. We can make up any excuse as long as we are there on time. I nod and walk faster. We are in the middle of March, and the sky is amazingly blue. Fuyuki City has long winters, but spring is finally around the corner. The days went by quickly. It's been a month since, it's been a month since the Holy Grail War. The city is back to normal now. The Holy Grail has been destroyed, and most of the damage caused by the Masters was taken care of by the Church. The person that came as a replacement for Kotamine is old, but energetic, and everything was smoothly settled. Kind of a shame we never actually see that person, even on Holotrexia, we never get to see them. Apparently they're nice before they're replaced by... the replacement. But one can see the after-effects of battle here and there. Kuzuki Surichiro, the person that chose to fight as a master, is considered missing. Issei was sad that the one who he treated as his older brother was gone, but he suddenly showed up at the temple to start with. It is only fitting that he leaves the same way. Issei just laughed it off. The surprising thing is Fujini, and it turned out that they often drank tea together. She complained that she wanted to fight him once, so it seems Fujini knew that Kuzuki was a master of martial arts. Did she know he was a master assassin, though? Shinji's life has been saved thanks to Tosuka, and he's currently in the hospital. I guess the hospital is part of the Magic Association, and he's getting better. Sakura is busy visiting Shinji, so she's been showing up at my place only on the weekends. I don't know why she would be showing up at the hospital. He's a total douchebag. Just take him off life support. No problem. I went to check up on them once, and they were getting along surprisingly well. I don't know if that event took something out of him, or if he's just unenergetic from the wounds. Either way, Shinji is ironic, but, uh but honest, and he's acting more like the Shinji I first got to know. Apparently all it took was a traumatic event and being merged with a horrible, terrible object to uh, make you into a better person. Who knew? Saber is not here anymore. No shit. She left this world after destroying the Holy Grail. Yeah, we saw that. Why are you explaining this? Something constraining her must have been released when she destroyed the Holy Grail with her own hands. It's vexing that I could not say goodbye to her, but I should be glad that she's freed from the binding of the Holy Grail. If... if I ever do see her again, I want to thank her as much as I can. Good luck with that. So, and finally the most important person. Right after we get down to the first floor... Oh, Student Council President! Are you patrolling the building at this time? Are you taking care of the club rooms? I am getting tired of saying this, but you really are diligent. We meet up with the person representing the students at the closing ceremony who's coming out of the teacher's office. I am also tired of hearing that line. Try guessing something else for a change. Or do you keep saying that on purpose? Issei glares at Tosaka. Of course it was on purpose. What, did you not realize that until now? I see. I thought you had more of a sense of humor, but I guess you really are a blockhead. I am very sorry. I always use the same greeting to show my affection for you, but I guess it was hard for you to understand. I can't tell if she's the same amount of rude or different amounts of rude now. What do you mean by affection? I have not done anything that deserves your affection. Come, Emiya. We'll be late if, uh, if we concern ourselves with this fox. Uh, yeah, by the way, I'm fucking and dating this fox. I don't even know who you are anymore. <laughs> Issei sure doesn't get along with Tosaka. Well, I feel the same way, so I'm in no position to feel sympathy. How do you not get along with her? You're dating her! That's, that's a fucking terrible... <laughs> that's... Yeah, I don't give a, I don't give along with my girlfriend, you know. I don't I don't understand her. What? <laughs> Shit like that that starts Catherine. <laughs> Anyways. Ugh. So our eyes meet as I walk past her. She's got hungry eyes. I feel the magic between you and I. Anyways, we decide to act normally when there are people around. I naturally ignore Tosuka and follow Issei. But... 
<laughs> wow, real natural there. <laughs> Good morning, Yumiya kun I'm glad you seem well. I don't know what she's angry about, but she embraces my arm and puts on a big smile. My head goes blank. It's because even though we've been seeing each other, this is the first time we've touched each other in a month. Wow. Your relationship sucks. <laughs> I feel like I have a hair on my nose and it won't go away. I try not to blush as I bear the sensation of her touch. I'm joking, but it is true that I am happy, Imiya kun That look worries me. Oh, let's go home together after you finish helping out the student council after the ceremony. I will keep- I'll keep on waiting in my classroom. Tuska puts emphasis on keep on waiting. What are you <laughs> What are you saying? Let go of him already. <laughs> okay, bye, Ren. It has nothing to do with you, Ryudo kun Excuse us, I am busy as well since I have to make a speech in your place, Student Council President. What? Sisko leaves, leaving behind the footsteps of a victor. What was that about, Emiya? What is your relationship with that fox? Well, it's hard to explain. First of all, I think I told you before that we're acquainted. <laughs> that was a month ago. I warned you to cut your ties with her. Oh. oh, I get it. Does she hold a weakness of yours? Well, I guess you can call it a weakness. She ought. <laughs> you seen them thighs? <laughs> Might as well call her KFC, because that meat be juicy. Or would Popeyes be a better, uh, better fucking, at, uh, be fucking, uh, better, uh, description for that? I don't actually know the difference, and I don't know too many other fast food chicken places I can make a joke using thighs. I should have said thighs instead of, uh, meat. That sounded a lot weirder. I'm tired. <laughs> I knew it. Dang, I cannot let you go now, Tosaka. Consult me, Emiya! Confess, Emiya! We shall give that fox her due punishment. Issei shakes me. Look at the time, Issei. The ceremony's starting. I do not care. The ceremony starts out with a speech from that fox. It shall be mentally good for us not to hear it. The student council president keeps shaking me. Issei is normally calm, but his personality changes when it involves Tosuka. Tosuka must be his natural enemy, but... Sorry, Issei. I'm sorry to let you down, but I can't do anything about Tosuka. She'll beat me instead if I... If I go to beat her. Uh, you shouldn't go near her. That is a rare negative comment from you. Is the weakness she's holding that bad? Unfortunately. So I'm leaving you to take care of Tosca. I know it's a hard fight, but please do your best. I see. Alright. Do not worry, Emiya. It is for the good of our school. I shall reveal her true identity and overthrow her. She seems to be planning something with all the athle athletic clubs, but the student council will be ready for her before the next year is out. The real match starts then. The student council president smiles in anticipation. Um, but he say, we'll all be graduating in a year. The ceremony comes to an end and the school starts to lose its liveliness. Spring break has started. Most of the students have left with a smile, and the students in athletic clubs are getting ready for their training camps. There aren't that many students left in the building. All the classrooms are empty, and the hallway is tinted in red. Looks more like gold than red. So you're finally done, huh? Issei makes you help even on the last day? I'm sure that's his way of getting me back. An empty classroom. Tosca smiles and says so as soon as she sees me coming into the red-tinted class 2A. Hey, that's because you did that ridiculous thing. I would have been freed a lot earlier if you hadn't gone and said needless things. I complain as I go into the classroom. Why is it so awkward to go into someone else's classroom even though they all look the same? Because you're a weird character. What? Are you saying it's my fault, Shiro? 
Half of it is definitely you. Look, you're the one who said we should act as strangers until next year since everyone would get suspicious. So why did you do such a thing? You don't mind a bit of running start since this year's over, right? First of all, there are other ways to ignore me. We weren't in a cafeteria or something. We were the only ones there, so at least give me a nod or something. I don't know why she's unhappy, but Tosco looks away and complains. Huh. Is it because of the evening sunlight? Her familiar gesture looks so fresh and cute that I'm fascinated. Man. Here, I got this, but do you want it? I show her the orange juice that was distributed among the helpers. Oh yeah, I'll take it. Good, you're considerate about things like this. She receives the juice box and takes a sip out of the and takes a sip out of the straw. She's sitting by the window. She looks down at the campus as if she's watching something bright. I follow her example and look down as I drink. It must be the track team that's running. They sure are energetic running like that when spring break starts tomorrow. Hey, were you on the track team before, Emiya kun Wow, they're setting up this too? Damn. So many little nods that you don't notice until you play all the stories on repeat. It's like watching a movie for the first time and then going back to try and check all the little clues that hint at things. Wow, weird. Then, Tosco suddenly asked me a strange question. Track team? No, I was always in the archery club. Oh, you. I know better. I mean, it's technically true, but it's also technically not. But, eh, that's semantics. And not really important for the plot. I see. Well, I guess there are times like that. Seeing the setting sun just reminded me. Telling me to forget about it, Tosca continues to drink the orange juice. I'll forget about it if she wants me to. When she calls me Imiyakun half the time, she's going to make a sarcastic remark. And the other half, she's going to say something really important. I'm sure in this case, it's the latter. After a month of studying magic under her and finally starting to recognize her habits. But time sure flies by. It's already been a month since the Holy Grail War ended and you became my apprentice. At this rate, I'm sure a year will fly by as well. <clears throat> it's been a month since Tosca started teaching me the basics of magic. I've been busy with hard work and Tosca's malicious nature. But she's right... Uh, but she's right now that I... She's right now... Oh, uh, she's right now that I think about it. There's, this past month sure went by quickly. So I'm sure a year would pass in a flash. A year, huh? We'll be leaving this school at that time. Yeah, today would be my last time in the classroom. And I'll be in a new classroom starting in April. And just like that, I'll be going to a new place in a year. Ah, oh, got my nails. Tosco holds her knees and looks down from the window. A new place, huh? What will I be doing a year from now when I graduate? No, I don't even need to think about it. There's only one thing I must do. I need to make my ideal, my ideal come true, just like he did. And well, there is one other big goal right now, but I don't want to think about it since it's irritating. Wait, oh, what will you be doing after you graduate, Emiya kun Are you going to succeed your dad? Huh? Well, that's true, but I want to become a proper magus more than I want to succeed my father. I can't boast unless I'm a proper magus. Oh? And to whom are you going to boast? She smiles as she asks. This. My other goal is to make her admit defeat. It, it doesn't matter, right? My goal right now is to become a proper magus, and that's what I that's why I'm your apprentice right now. Please give me your best regards for the next year. Oh, you sure are optimistic. You think you can become a proper magus in a year? I was ready to teach you for ten years when you become my apprentice, but I see you're fine with just one more year, huh? T ten years? Th that's great, but no, that's not it. That that's really long. That's a uh, that's really a long way ahead. Wouldn't you get tired? Nope. As your goal is to become a proper magus, my goal is to make you a proper magus. I have it all planned out in my head, you know? Should I write it down and give it to you? Uh, um... Well, that's... 
That's great, but... But I guess that's impossible. You're going to succeed your dad, right? Then that means you'll be staying here after you graduate. Yeah. But what are you going to do? Your family supervises this town. You can't leave this town, right? Me? I'll be going to London after I graduate. I got an admission recommendation because of what happened, so I guess they're letting me in without any tests. What? You mean that London, the headquarters of the Mag Magic Association? No, the London in Berlin. Yep, there's a limit to what I can do here, so I'm thinking of studying there for about five years. I hear that my dad did the same thing, and it's natural to go to the highest institute of education if you want to be a proper magus, right? I'm stunned. It's so sudden that my head blanks out. It's natural for Tosca, who is a legitimate magus. I finally realized the difference in our positions. London, huh? It's a really amazing thing, right? I don't know. It's vexing, but it's not because they approve of my of my own powers. I was only invited because of my dad's achievements and because I'm the last one alive. She speaks casually, but I'm sure it's an amazing thing. But London, huh? It's certainly too far away. My father wasn't in the Magic Association. I'm just like him, and I don't like formal stuff. But you have the qualifications to enter in that case. I'm sure they'll test you if I recommend you. But I might be able to move there. I can start working more, study English, save up traveling and living expenses, find a job over there. I know you're not enthusiastic about going there since the Magic Association is your enemy, but the clock tower has proper equipment, and it's really well suited for training. Oh, but you have to keep your reality marble a secret, so I guess they'll test your basics. Well, would one year be enough? No, no, let's say I'm able to rent an apartment there. I don't know what kind of a place the clock tower is, but I'm sure Tosco will get even busier. And it should be better for me to go there after I become a proper Magus by myself. Yeah, that sounds good. First of all, London isn't suited for me. I bet I'll faint if I go there, and it's if it's filled with people like Kotomine. Hey, are you listening to me, Emiya-kun? Huh? Were you saying something, Tosca? Real smooth. <clears throat> Tosca frowns and shuts her mouth. So... After taking a deep breath, she makes a serious face and... I forgot to tell you, but I'm being invited as the successor of the Tosca family. In other words, I can get a proper room as a proper magus. She says something strange. I'm telling you that they approve of me as a proper magus, so it's not unusual for me to have an apprentice or two, right? There are factional disputes there, so I'm allowed to take at least one of my apprentices. Yeah, factional disputes. That's, uh, always great what you want to hear about going to, into a school. Tosca sneaks a peek at me. Um, that's... I may be blunt, but I know what Tosca is trying to say. In a word... Yep, I can unconditionally take one follower as an assistant. You won't have to take the test that way, and you'll be exempt from tuition fees. Well, but you'll be in a disadvantage... Disadvantage... Disadvantageous position because you'll be a student at the Mages Association without being part of it. My head resumes its thinking. Now, I force it to start working again. What Tosca is telling me, I put every cell in my brain to work to weigh the options I have. I must look funny as Tosca is giggling. <clears throat> what? I'm not considering going there because you talked me into it, okay? Is that all you want to tell me? Well, I'm going to London. She looks kindly at me. Then, Tosca makes a mischievous expression. So, what will you do, Shiro? She asks me gently with her, eye, with her eyes that see through me. My face turns red. Her words and expression blow away my humanity and my dislike of the magic... My humility, not humanity. And my dislike of the magic association. This is what I mean by Tosca holding my weakness. I can't help it if I fell in love with her. Oh, why well, go silent now? I haven't heard your answer yet. She keeps smiling mischievously. She knows what my answer is, but she's mercilessly attacking me. Uh, I, um... To be honest, London's too far away, but I can't imagine myself being taught by anyone other than Tosika. And I never even thought about parting with her. Most of all, I want to be with Tosika. Be clear, this is important. Will you still come with me, even if it's as my assistant? 
She looks up into my eyes. She looks so attractive that I feel like my heart will pop out of my mouth. It, sh shut up, you idiot. 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 It, it, if it's so important, tell me about it in a more appropriate place. I can't answer you when it's so sudden. I don't know what'll happen to me if I keep staring at her, so I look away. I still feel Tosika's presence. She's happily watching my reaction. Hey, Shiro. What's your answer? She murmurs gently. She's got me beat. Is it this hard to nod and reply honestly? But I can't turn around unless I say it to her. You idiot, don't ask me such an obvious question. I meet Tuska's gaze and tell her my honest opinion. Her smile broadens at those words. Okay, then please give me your best regards from now on, Imiya-kun. I'm going to train you until you become a proper magus, so prepare yourself. Same to you. I took that seriously. I'm going to get taught by you until I become a proper magus. Of course, I'm going to make you an honest man and have you lead a happy life. I won't allow you to give up just by getting taken to London. Where did her previous pr uh, prettiness go? She says so with a daring smile and jumps off the desk. The sunset should end soon. Spring break will end, April will come, and another year should pass by quickly. We will part with this scenery until then. After a year, Tosca and I will spend our final days of student life here. Let's go home. It'll be a lively dinner at your place today. We leave the classroom without any lingering mo memories. We can still hear the club activities from outdoors. The sounds are far off and they remind me of the sword fight. I can't stay in the same place forever. Tosca and I will be going someplace different in a year. It should be a while before I find out if this is the right choice or not. <clears throat> I recall the red figure one more time. Neither this classroom nor that fight will change. Everything is the same. Everything is an illusion like a mirage that disappears when one turns around. But I can get there if I aim high. I will surely be able to catch up to his back with Tosuka's help. So I'll come up with an answer at that time. The swords that echo far away. By relying on those sounds, I shall eventually reach that place. Walking with the wind blowing on your face, walking towards the future. Busy days with no compass to guide you. After traveling to distant exotic countries, you will return to where you belong one sunny day. And that's it. That's the end of the UBW route. Wow. Boy, I have some opinions on UBW. Mostly, I think the story is decent, but it's got some pacing issues. Mostly in the fact that it's got three antagonists and doesn't know how to equally balance all of them. First, it's, oh, Caster is a threat. We should deal with her. Archer is a threat. We should deal with him. Gilgamesh is now the villain because... Uh... I think they should have focused more on making one of them a villain, primarily not Gilgamesh. Maybe if they just cut Gilgamesh altogether, it would have been perfectly fine. Gilgamesh had no reason to basically be here, except that he exposits more about the Holy Grail and stuff like that. That's literally it. Archer should have been the main villain for this route, uh, but there's nothing I can do about that. I've said multiple times how much I think that Ren, despite my own personal opinions about her character, is a better love interest than Saber because they actually have chemistry, and I still believe that. Um, I guess ultimately there's not much else to go about, except for also the ending with Archer. That's a little out of nowhere and kind of stupid. I hate that they just say, oh, he survived. Also, in case you were inspecting, expecting some kind of like fight at the end between uh, Tosika and... Uh, oh, what the hell is her name? Uh... All I can think of is Ilya's maids. What the fuck is her name? Oh, Luvia. That was it. In case you were expecting some kind of fight like that in the uh, in the uh, clock tower, yeah, that's exclusive to the anime. That didn't actually happen. In fact, Luvia's name is not ever mentioned in Fate's Night except at the epilogue of Heavensfield, where she is mentioned once. <laughs> the guy who didn't do anything. Um, and Luvia herself would not appear in game until Hollow Atraxia, the follow-up game. So, yeah, that's more the anime getting Lucy with its adaptation. But yeah, 
that's that's been Unlimited Blade Works. Probably the anime series that got a lot of people interested in Fate, and hopefully now you all can see what are the true differences between the, vis the visual novel and the anime. I will still forever wholeheartedly agree that the visual novel and the original context material for all of Fate's stuff is superior than its adaptations. The anime is a nice popcorn film that you watch for action. It's not what you watch if you want to get into the series or learn about the series. There is just so much cut away from it. And the fact that I cut th I cut out the prologue of this section and we still... I don't actually know the final count for episodes. Probably hit close to 100 episodes in this. Also probably proves that. But that will be it for now, guys. So next time... Of course, we still have Heaven's Fill to tackle, but again, I will be taking a break from Fate Stay Night until then. So until then, I'll catch you all later. Asta. Okay, I wasn't expecting this. This kind of destroyed my entire idea of what I was going to do. Huh. Well, what came and went were distant memories. They were signs that he forgot and cast away, something that cannot be returned. The sparks of the crashing swords, crashing spirits, many dozens of unskilled attacks and defenses. They were clumsy attacks that just tried to deny each other. Why did such a thing revive a worn-out oath? They were impossible attacks. His charging body is covered in wounds. His fingers are broken, his limbs are slashed apart, his breathing has stopped, although the boy does not know it. Even at a rush, his speed is trifling and his attacks are mediocre. Although he has absorbed his combat skill, his techniques are now as clumsy as an amateur's again. His attack is executed haphazardly, but his attack is heavier than any that came before. There is no superhero. The boy's mind is obliterated by the one who grew to realize that, fa that fact more than anyone. The distorted mind should collapse from the stress. It is obvious that the boy will be devoured by his contradiction. But where are the signs of his defeat? He moves his wounded body and steadies his faltering mind, but there is no hesitation in his attacks. His fury is incomparable to before. The boy swings his sword recklessly. The attacks are equally matched. The space is filled with sparks and everything entering it will be cut to pieces. It is the embodiment of their minds that melt together even though they repel each other. The Desperate Attack It is only a dying spark that a man gives off in his last moment. The boy gasps with each attack, almost falls, steadies himself, and attacks yet again. Seeing it, he is confident that his enemy has no power left. The boy in front of him is a corpse. But, why is there infinite power in his arms holding the sword? He sees an illusion. It must be because he got bored with seeing someone attacking, even though he knows it is useless. The irritation boils up his most detestable impulse. What did he feel was beautiful and noble? The boy said that he doesn't want to see people die meaninglessly. He wanted to save everyone who was in trouble if they could be saved. It is out of the question. He knows such a wish is just meaningless hypocrisy. An ideal where others are more important than yourself is an ideal that should never be held. But... Did he ever not dream that such a life would be wonderful? He cannot hear what his enemy is saying. His enemy's voice is too weak to be heard, but his attacks are fierce. The enemy's hands are already one with the hilt. It must be to fix the sword there, but the impact will go to his body like that. The boy is covered with blood and he will die if he retreats. For the boy, every attack comes with great pain. The voices are hard to pick up. The boy who is on the verge of death frantically opposes the imp impediment in front of him. He does not need to be told where the boy's motivation is coming from. It is a bad dream. He is shown an old mirror image. He keeps swinging his sword with tearing arms. The only thing there is a strained yell. There were people that could not be saved and there was him who could not, be, who could not save them. He saw people dying meaninglessly and he swore never to let such a thing occur again. There is only one thing that comes and goes through his mind, things he believes in, things he believed in, an ideal he swore never to surrender, something he will never surrender. 
and so, he realizes that there will be no end to the attacks. The enemy will not stop. The enemy will never stop on his own. Even though the boy is attacking with all his power, he is taking no notice of him. The boy is only trying to slash himself, the one who obstructs himself. His enemy is fighting for the things he believed, and for the things he will keep on believing in. Realizing that, he grits his teeth. The boy keeps challenging, even though he knows he cannot win, and that it is meaningless. That is the exact mistake he made. But then why? Why do these eyes keep on staring at him? Another crashing sound. The attack is parried. The enemy that could not block any attacks repels the attack like nothing. The mirror breaks. He is not strong. He is not strong at all. He fights risking his life, looking ugly and miserable. But, who in the world can laugh at him? He stops his breath. Parrying the oncoming attack, the enemy readies his sword again. A final blow. Will the boy stay standing in spite of all his wounds and the strain on his mind? Of course. The boy overcame such limits ten times. It is obvious that the enemy will not stop even if this attack is blocked. The, blow, the boy slashes his sword, even though he is collapsing. Those eyes, they are looking straight at him. He sees a familiar dream for an instant. <phone rings> Whose dream was that, and who inherited that dream? <phone rings> the boy's voice reaches the empty mind. A single scenery close in. What an ugly, fanatic goodwill. A beautiful ideal to struggle for. The final blow is coming in, but the man does not watch the sword that is about to pierce him. That is the only thing on the boy's mind. Even if his heart is a fake, the beauty of what he believed in is real. That is something he cannot lie about. And it is the origin of his powers. The boy cries out with a smashed throat that he wants everyone to be happy. Yes, there is no road of retreat. Because the dream is, he has made numerous mistakes. He had no way to atone for them except for hating and killing himself. His hands are covered in blood and it is something that can never be forgiven. But still, a straight gaze, mistakes and lies, shaking off everything, running on without stopping. The battle ends with a victory. The pain in his chest does not lift up his conviction. As the man hates himself, salvation will never be given. But he earns a small answer. The answer is only for this summoning. It is a meaningless thing that he will forget the next time he is summoned. But there is nothing to regret. It is something that has already been built up. Something that the boy will build up using all his life. There is only one thing coming and going through his mind. There is regret. He does not know how many times he wished to redo things. Heroic Spirit Emiya will forever curse this end, but still. But still, I was not wrong. There is nothing to talk about. The boy will remain and he will leave. The only things that remain are the exchanged blows. The path is long. Relying on the sounds of the swords echoing far away, the boy heads for the deserted plains. It was totally unnecessary. Why did I need that? Why was that at the end? I guess it's to explain why Archer just let Shiro go, I guess. And whatever. God, I'm tired. Thank you.